Welcome to Let's Talk Pets with your host, Linda Weston, right here on News Talk 107.7 and 1400 The Hub. Good Saturday morning, everyone, and welcome to Let's Talk Pets, a fun program. Very happy to be part of the fabulous Hub family lineup of programs. I'm Linda Weston, your host from Friends of Cookville Putnam County Animals, a nonprofit, totally volunteer support group for the Cookville Putnam County Animal Shelter. This morning, my co host, Sarah Hollick Webb from Friends of Cookville Putnam County. County Animals is here with me in the studio, and we are very happy to have a wonderful longtime friend with us today, and that is Sharon Langford, president of Friends of White County Animals, and also a prestigious a member of the board of directors for the Elephant Sanctuary in Hohenwald. So we have lots to talk about today, but Sarah, before we get started, let's just take a minute and thank our sponsors who make this show possible. We are grateful to Pet Supplies Plus located in the Walmart Shopping Center. And Copeland Veterinary Hospital on 10th Street with 24-hour emergency service. And Cumberland Pet Essentials, offering pet grooming, styling and spa, holistic foods, nutritional counseling, and a pet boutique at 142 South Willow in the Willow Tree Plaza. And friends of Cookville, Putnam County, and Animals. So many thanks to each of these groups. And now we get to say welcome back to Sharon Langford. Lots has happened since we had a chance to catch up with you, my dear. Oh, absolutely. And thanks for having me back. I always enjoy it. Well, it's always a gift to have you here because you bring so much great information. Um, one of the things we wanted to get caught up on was you, your friends of a White County group just had a wonderful event called Wine and Wags. So fill us in. Okay. It was April 23rd. It was at Northfield Vineyards. We had rescheduled. It had originally been planned for the fall, but because of COVID, uh, we rescheduled. So it had been a year and a half since we'd had one. Okay. It was a Western theme, uh, and we had a, a contest, and, and there were some people who were uh, very uh, uh attractively and interestingly dressed in, in their <laughs> western attire and then we had uh, Bill Breeze provided hay rides for people who wanted to do that and then photo ops at the, the chuck wagon and so forth so some of the people told me that it was the best one they'd ever attended that we'd had oh, and that, nice. that it was a lot of fun and we have decided uh, as of uh, our this past week's meeting that we're going to go to a spring schedule with the wine and wags we had originally started with the fall a few years ago uh, so we'll be having it next April 22nd uh, 2023 we're already scheduled with Northfield so well I thought you know I thought it was yeah, such a great idea yeah. that one of the things that I was really caught up in is that how much you guys focused on as far as your pu- part of your fundraising on the events and the uh, experiences mm-hmm. that you sold I thought that was just an incredible idea rather than so much stuff mm-hmm. um, as part of your auction. Well, several years ago, I was trying to think you know, what would be unique and what did not have an absolute value. So I decided to do celebrity experiences. And I, I was doing uh, pet food with the UCHRA and the director of the White County office is married to the county executive. So that was kind of convenient. And, and so, <laughs> so she volunteered uh, a ride on his Harley. And, and I ended up, Robert and Yvette Bob, it on your board and I ended up getting to take the ride uh, but anyway that was the beginning of celebrity and now uh, I asked uh, you know like the sheriff and the fire chief and and uh, the people and then Marvin who's the chairman of the Chamber of Commerce and people like that to uh, do experiences and I think it's a win-win uh, it is so for everyone that wasn't there what I thought was so interesting that friends of white county animals did for fundraising as part of their live auction and it was a live auction only this year there was no mm-hmm. not a silent right. auction aspect of it is that they auctioned off events with local celebrities uh, a lot of mm-hmm. folks that had political offices uh one country music yes. star right. you had a right. that right. donated an incredible experience uh that did, in, did, did very well yeah. mm-hmm. um and they auctioned those off on a, on a live auction format that was a motorcycle ride and mm-hmm. a ride in a fire truck and a tour around. Of course, White County has so many beautiful landmarks and so many waterfalls. Uh, I think Marvin yeah. did the tour around White County, a guided tour. Um, and they au- and you auctioned them off, and they did incredible 
incredibly yeah. well. All of well, them were very strong. Uh, and then another one was Spooling Thistle. Uh, Diana uh, sent me a real personalized that she would spend time and, and she's going to talk with them about what they like with their dessert and, and she's going to create a special dessert and then Ben, the chef, will visit with them. So, I mean, how do you put a dollar value on something like that? So a $200 gift certificate turned into $850 with that added mm-hmm. personal attention from, from Ben and Diana at Bull and Thistle. Well, you know, <clears throat> this is, I think, just such a unique <clears throat> event and such a unique <clears throat> way to raise money for animals. <clears throat> and so for folks listening in other, other areas who might be looking for or or trying to think how mm-hmm. can i help the animal shelter how uh-huh. can i help the animals in our area mm-hmm. Those are the, the. This is a great idea because you guys partnered with Northfield Winery, right, and and several others to, to make this happen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, it takes, yeah. and I think yeah, I think this is just uh, one of the many things. And that, how many years has this event been going yeah. on? Uh, I think this was the fourth. So overall, you know, it's <laughs> yeah, just fade. Yeah, 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 it's, it's kind yeah. of it's kind of a young event, but it was strong from yeah. coming out of the gate. And I think it is because of all your community partnerships. Yeah. Uh, you you went to some of the folks you know some of the people that you know are animal lovers they're they're animal lovers you don't have to go very far certainly in our area to find animal lovers and business owners and uh community officials and things like that and when you start asking around when you start talking Mm -hmm. to people i've got an idea i really want you know our our shelter needs resources our animals need resources Mm -hmm. when you start telling everyone all the reasons everything that's needed i think people are blown away about how short that our communities can sometimes Mm -hmm. fall with getting resources out to animals and to people, to pet owners as well. And and, and that's a win for everybody, uh, I think. And uh, when I met last week with the DeKalb uh, person that I've been uh, kind of coaching along, they had done a uh, <clears throat> the uh, uh, ver- their version of you know, the cold water plunge. And so they sold, uh, people would pay so much to get somebody to plunge, and when it <laughs> reached that amount, and that was very successful for them. And, you know, that's customized to the environment they live in with Center Hill Lake and yeah. stuff. So there's lots of ways that you can take that and, and you know and then make it your own kind of yeah. You know it's great to know because I think there are people and Sarah, you know we've run into people who want to help, they just don't know how to help. Mm-hmm. Or maybe they don't have a lot of time, or maybe they don't have a lot of money, but they're they're willing to to help. So if you can give them a way to help, mm-hmm. then you're you're good to go. That's exactly it. We have seen so many people again. You know, they're animal lovers everywhere. Right. Every right. business has an animal right. lover in it. There's there's animal lovers. You know, under. Under every path. Under every tree. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, if you give them a clear and easy pathway to be able to assist, you know, it's, it's just one of those things, and it does take a village. Whenever you're mm-hmm. going on an endeavor like this to really change the hearts and minds of a community and get resources out to communities, it does take a whole village to do this. It's not a one person, one business, one, you know, there's not a, mm-hmm. there's no one part of it that is more important. It takes everybody. It takes members of your community, your businesses, right. your uh, community leaders, all of that, to make all of this successful. Right. And by having events like this that, A, bring together community, I mean, it was, it was a great, it was a great turnout. I thought the, the attendance was really good at your event and um and the diversity and, and the, the crowd was wonderful yeah. as well and the energy i thought was good yes yeah it was it was, it was, it was a fun night mm-hmm. so when you can get people like this together and and just you know make your case known i think it's i think it's an exactly. incredible uh, well, one for the animals i appreciate you coming too so, it was a lot of fun yeah. i was love being all, there we all help each other yeah well one of the things that your group does the, that's really pretty cool i think mm-hmm. is focusing on pet retention mm-hmm. and basically that just means helping people keep their pets in their homes mm-hmm. right correct so tell us about your how you got into that okay. and food distribution well, and all of that a few years ago <clears throat> uh, i was determined to start a pet food bank and i went to two three places that i thought would be interested and they didn't really get back to me so then i went to a person in white county who's really well connected and he told me I need to go see Sheila at UCHRA. So 
started out with Meals on Wheels, uh, and I would go out and ride and, and get to know the pets, and they gave me a census of pets to begin with, but but I, until COVID started, I went out and rode you know at least once a month and sometimes more frequently. And then we added the commodities, which was several hundred people, and that's every other month. Uh, <clears throat> And then later on, um, and about two years ago, I guess, we added First Baptist Church, which has a fishes and loaves program uh, for people. And it's a sit-down meal and service and then uh, food to take home with them, uh, staples-type foods. And then uh, we added the pet food. And uh, they have recently had to tell us not to come as early as we've been coming because people come in line up to get their pet food, Aww. and they don't go in for the services. And the thing, th- uh, it's happened at commodities too. But you know, since COVID, uh, we now have a drive-through protocol, which prevents that from happening. But at the Baptist Church, the way that's set up, they try to come to us first. But it's just an indication of how much people love their pets. Uh, so we will give out uh, probably forty, fifty thousand pounds of pet food. And then uh, this past uh, week, we've had both of those major distributions and also a repackage session with the uh, special education class at the White County High School. So, Well, you know, it's incredible to see things like this. Again, these are grassroots efforts yeah. uh, in a community. And what we saw, you know, in every shelter and anyone mm. that's ever been involved in animal welfare is that often the reason that pets end up in a shelter is because people have found themselves in a hard mm-hmm. situation um, and often that is financially uh, they have found themselves challenged and they're having to make really difficult choices about taking care of themselves and their family or having to give up their pet and often it's something as simple as not being able to afford food for them not being able mm-hmm. to provide right. there are people and I know Sharon right. has seen it she's mentioned it that will go without food themselves yes and give them give their pets their human food before they will let their pets uh, go without food. So we, mm-hmm. we see this very often and it's heartbreaking and to mm-hmm. be able to find a solution as simple as this, it's you know, on the surface it's very simple you know, to reach out to the yeah. community and provide yeah. food. The logistics are, are yes. challenging. <laughs> and I well, go to Nashville at least once a week and Nashville Pet Products gives me a lot of food for the food bank. But, well, yeah. we need to take a quick break. Well, okay. If you want to just slip in a way to contact you, sure. if somebody's okay. interested in starting a food distribution mm. program or donating yeah. to the food distribution, yes. how best to contact you? Uh, the best way, I'm just going to give my cell phone. It's uh, area code 615-943-1483, and the best thing to do is text me because I'm on the road a lot, and I don't answer my phone when I'm driving. So, But Sounds I will good. respond quickly. So, Okay, did everybody get that? 615-943-1483. And Perfect. I, I'd be happy to help. Perfect. Okay, folks, please don't go away. We are going to be right back with uh, with more from our guest, Sharon Langford. She's going to talk to us, uh, uh, give us the scoop on the activities at the Elephant Sanctuary. So don't go away. We'll be right back with Let's Talk Pets on News Talk 107.7 and 1400, The Hub. Copeland Veterinary Hospital is a full-service veterinary hospital, including 24-hour emergency assistance, and is located at 821 East 10th Street in Cookville, focusing on providing the highest quality care to clients and patients through our devotion to client communication, commitment to excellent medical care, and use of innovative diagnostics. Founded in 1970, our veterinarians and support staff can provide a progressive, beneficial, and effective impact on your pet's health. Open Monday through Thursday, 7.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m., Friday, 7.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m., Saturdays from 8 a.m. to noon, and closed on Sunday. Pet Supplies Plus, located in the Walmart Shopping Center on South Jefferson, is open 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. daily, specializing in pet foods, treats, and edible chews, pet toys, and apparel, pet supplies of all kinds, grooming and health, as well as flea and tick items, offering all major brands and a large selection of natural foods and treats made in the USA. Fish, reptiles, ferrets, and other very small pets available. Cumberland Pet Essentials has been serving Middle Tennessee since 1989, offering dog and cat grooming and styling. In their natural pet market, they sell dog and cat supplies, accessories, and high-quality trusted brands of food and treats. Owner Karen Ritako is an ISCC certified pet stylist and a certified pet nutritionist. She offers free nutritional counseling, helping owners make healthier choices for their pets. Their store hours are Monday through Saturday, 8 to 5 p.m., located at 142 South Willow Avenue in the Willow Tree Plaza. Give them a call 931-528-7711 Cumberland Pet Essentials. 
Welcome back to Let's Talk Pets with me, your host, Linda Weston, and Cookville Putnam County Animals Vice President Sarah Hollick Webb on News Talk 107.7 and 1400, The Hub. So if you're just tuning in now, Sarah and I have been talking today with our longtime good friend, Sharon Langford, who is not only president of Friends of White County Animals, she's also on the board of directors for the Elephant Sanctuary in Hohenwald. So we're excited. Sharon, tell us what is the latest elephant news? Oh, well, there's a, there's a lot. Uh, okay. And... Uh, uh, this past year, uh, the Discovery Center is open from, uh, it's been open for a little while, uh, but it's open from Tuesday uh, through Saturday. It opens at 9 o'clock, and it's free. Oh, nice. Okay. Mm-hmm. So okay. That, that's something that is a wonderful opportunity. Uh, there's a new LA cam that's been added between Q and uh, Asia Sanctuary, so there's it's even easier to see the elephants now. Right. <clears throat> the education in March... Uh, uh, they were totally booked through May, and there have been uh, 14,000 individuals who have gone through the education really? program in 2021. Nice. And the numbers for this year are, are look like they're going to be even greater. And we've had uh, this year uh, three of the international partners. And once before, we kind of went through the, the people that we work with financially and other ways. But the new uh, vet hospital is a wonderful international resource for people to come here and learn the things and learn how to do things and so forth. But this year, Elephant Haven from France has been here, some of their people, and they have their first elephant named Gandhi, and then Wild Welfare from Malaysia, and that focuses on the interactions between humans and elephants and so forth, and, and you know, more the way that the elephant sanctuary does it. And then Wild Welfare, uh, well, I mentioned that, and then working dogs for conservation and i mentioned that one other time but that's the program that takes shelter dogs and uh trains them and and their role is to sniff out uh people you know who are uh trying to poach or otherwise harm elephants so those are the three of the international partners who have actually visited this year really wow Mm -hmm. wow yeah well you know let's let's back up just a little bit and you know, I think a lot of people don't quite realize what the the elephant sanctuary is, and that mm-hmm. very true to its name, it is a sanctuary. It is, a sanctuary. It is not a zoo. It is not for you know elephants to be shown or seen or anything Trained like or, yeah. that. Yeah. Um, you or know, the elecams. Yeah, yes, yeah. that's that's why the elecams are just so vital yes. and so wonderful because it yeah. shows the elephants in their natural habitat. Or as natural as, you know, it can possibly be made. The sanctuary is, is massive. And it's one of the few in the world, mm. uh, not only in the country, but uh, there's not many sanctuaries like this. And certainly this, certainly the sanctuary in Hohenwald is, is leading the way. Mm. Um, in so many ways. In so is. many ways, in cooperatively research, in education. And, and, yes, and in international, yeah. Mm-hmm. So tell, tell us just a little bit about, just give us the general overview of the sanctuary, because there's a lot of moving parts. There are. Well, there's <laughs> yes. the, you know, big the, parts. <laughs> there, there's the Q Habitat, and that has four Asian elephants now, and they were all with um, uh, the Hawthorne Corporation, and uh, they were seized. They're, they're celebrating their 16th anniversary at the sanctuary. And wow. uh, originally there were 11, and there, there's these four survivors now. <clears throat> and then there's the uh, Asia, and that's so where Sissy and Nosy and Nosy is the African elephant, as we've talked about, and of course they're separate, uh, separated by fence, but they're interacting more and more. And they're in the barn; they sleep side, of course, again protective uh, fence in between them. Uh, but socially, they are very uh, responsive to each other, and each of them has been given a, a bit of a larger area. Uh, fencing, as everybody probably knows, is extremely expensive now. So, and there's a a lot of maintenance that has to be done and then also creating new fences. Elephants are pretty tough on... <laughs> <laughs> pretty hard on yes, your average are, uh, enclosure. Are, yeah. And yeah, and of course there's always the goal of giving them uh, more and more enriched environments and so forth and as Nosy has gotten accustomed to her new home to give her more and more space to roam and be an elephant.
elephant, yeah, and uh, so and then there's the African habitat that has the four African elephants in it. So tell us real quick. You mentioned the Hawthorne Corporation, yeah. So I think that's really interesting. How do the elephants? What kind of elephants come to the sanctuary? How do they generally well, get there? These were performing elephants, and 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 they were seized under the Animal Cruelty Act uh, in 2006. Uh, uh, and uh, <clears throat> so uh, that is pretty much the background. Of course, Tara, you know, who we're still sad about, but just hoping that she's happy and, and adapted. But she had been a performing skating elephant. And, of course, Nosy was on the street, basically, in Alabama mm-hmm. with a, a, an owner. And many of them have had a very solitary lifestyle in addition to the physical deprivation and actual punishment sometimes uh, uh, they haven't had the social interaction that they need, and elephants are very emotional and social elephants. And the sanctuary is so focused. I mean, those elephants are so pampered. Uh, for and and the uh, staff, uh, they know what they like. And and there were like 500 Christmas trees donated this year, and they've gone through them. The elephants knock over trees that are standing in the habitat, and then they make them special. I've seen them when we've been there. Pre- COVID uh, through the fence, the demonstrations that the vet staff did, you know, giving them their rewards after they would stick their trunk through or whatever they Aww. were asked to do. Uh, and, but it's just an absolutely amazing. It's as close as they can get it to what their natural habitat would be in terms of vegetation and mm-hmm. so forth. Sure. And then all those added treats and, and customization. So um, they, they are well cared for. <clears throat> Well, I, I think it's so fun because, you know, we talk about what treats to give our dogs and cats and things. <laughs> yeah. What what kind of treats do elephants, well, what do they like? Uh, they, uh, they they like fruits, melons, berries, uh, and that usually, and in, in, uh, I think it was Sissy's birthday recently. Anyway, one of them got a vegan cake uh, that was made for her. Some of them like coconut, but the staff, they actually observe them and try different things and uh, and you know, make treats that are really customized for them. Like, you know, we might like chocolate or something like that. <laughs> so, well, it's yeah, cute. Yeah, it's yeah, very yeah, great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. very and great. And, of course, they naturally eat grass and hay and, and you know, trees and bark, all that kind of stuff, yeah. Well, for people who either want to know more about uh, what all's going on there, mm-hmm. other than just uh, going to the Elecam, how do how do people find out more? Well, the website is very informative. Uh, Sarah, I know you've looked at it because yes. you've commented about it. It's extremely informative. Uh, and, and then the Discovery Center is a wonderful option to, to go to, yeah, to so physically home, go Yeah, home, home wall's yeah. pretty remote. So, yeah, check yeah. out elephants. El, check out the website mm-hmm. before you go. Make sure yeah. the Discovery Center hours yeah. are still the same. Do all that and do your research before you go because it's a day-long trip. I don't care where you're yeah. coming from. It's still a day-long <laughs> trip. Now, now I go there for morning meetings, Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> I did before COVID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a, it, but it, it's a, a very charming little town. You know, and uh, it's close to the Natchez Parkway, so you can combine a Natchez Parkway and Elephant visit both. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Pack a little picnic, yeah. and there you got you it. Go. You yeah. got it. Yeah. Well, let's switch gears here for just yeah. a moment, and let's go back to cats and dogs. Yeah. One of the things that all three of us do in various ways is work to find good homes for the cats, the dogs, the puppies, and the kittens who come into our lives who are without homes and um, and more so without any loving owners. And I, I think, you know, not only does the pet need the owner, but the owner... There's so much to gain. There's so many benefits to having a pet in your life. You know, the rewards are just exponential. And I found this uh, really cute thing on online that we're going to talk about. Um, 25 reasons. Now, cat people don't get upset, but this is 25 reasons dogs are the best pets on earth. Okay. So where do we start? Let's see. Um It says, if you're a dog owner, you probably already know just how awesome dogs are. They fill your life with love, loyalty, fur, and plenty of reasons to smile. Here are just a few. So the first one is, and I love this one because it's so true. Number one, they greet you like you've been gone a century when you only went out for a five-minute trip to the store. 
And number two, they keep your bed warm for you when it gets cold at night. That is true. That, <laughs> okay. is, that is so true. Sharon, what's number three well, here? Number three, dogs will watch TV with you without hogging the remote. Well, boom. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, so I love number four because I think this is this kind of exemplifies the spirit of the dog. Dogs find the greatest joy in even the simplest things like a ride in the car. You know, all these things that we, that we take for granted. Our, our pets understand how important they are. Jingle the car keys. Yeah. That's all you have to do. Number five, dogs are best because Unlike people, it says, and most cats, um, they love you unconditionally. <laughs> cats have a lot of conditions on their love, yeah. And number six, <laughs> they take awesome selfies. I don't know about that, but yeah, okay. Yeah. And number seven, according to a study by Nova School of Business and Economics, dogs in the workplace can lower stress, improve communication, and foster social cohesion when a flexible organization culture is in place. And then number eight, dogs will inspire you to stop and sniff the flowers. Oh, <laughs> yes. And, you know, and speaking of being outside, dogs make the best workout partners. That's number nine. They'll motivate you to get up and get off the couch because they can be very insistent at the door. Uh, and even when you don't, if the weather's bad, even if you don't really feel like getting up and moving, your dog will make you. Your dog will tell you, it's time to go out, take me for a walk, let's go play fetch. They'll let you know that it's time to go out. Well, and that's why the American Heart Association, number 10, says that owning a dog may even protect you from the risks of heart disease. And number 11, dogs are willing to put aside differences and live in peace with uh, their natural-born enemies. Cutest picture of a dog and a cat cuddling up together. Okay, we, we've just got a little time left, Sarah. Yeah. Uh, uh, owning Sharon, a dog go ahead. can help kids learn about responsibility and empathy. So number 13 is one that is just really just beyond cool in that the, the Department of Experimental Biology has done a study and they have found that dogs can sense um, in 97 percent of the cases they've brought forth is that dogs can pull out the sample, a blood sample that is positive for cancer really? amongst n numerous other blood samples. So dogs are, dogs are just so underrated, I guess. Their sense of smell is so All highly the evolved. They they're do. amazing. Well, number 15, they seem to know when you're feeling blue, so they gladly uh, uh, will share their favorite toy to cheer you up. And number 16, they know how to make a big splash in a pool. That uh, They do. Number 17, according to a study funded by the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, having a family dog can actually help prevent kids from developing allergies. Ah. And then number 18, dogs have some amazing athletic skills. Well, 19 and 20 kind of go together. Dogs can help you socialize and encourage you to go out more and explore, and they give you something to laugh and smile about every day. So well, isn't that the, the truth? truth? And when you're, uh, whether you're roughing it or in, enjoying a plush hotel, they make great travel companions. Oh, slobbery dog kisses <laughs> are actually awesome, and dogs make celebrating holidays even more fun. And number 24, they can make boring chores, even laundry more enjoyable just by being cute and adorable. And they can make it longer by spreading stuff all around, yes. too. <laughs> and the last one, every day is an adventure when you share your life with a, with a dog. So all of those are just fun, fun things to think about. That is our show for today. Thank you, Sharon, for joining us Thank again. Thank you. Um, folks, we're wishing everyone a perfect weekend. And hope you'll join us here next Saturday, 10 a.m. on News Talk 107.7 and 1400 The Hub. And if you should happen to miss these airtimes, you can always listen to many of our episodes by going to YouTube channel, youtube.com slash channel uh, slash CPC Animal Friends. If you have questions or comments, folks, please do email them to us at putnamcountypets at gmail.com. Happy weekend, everyone. Friends of Cookville Putnam County Animals is a 501c3 nonprofit, all volunteer support group for the Cookville Putnam County Animal Shelter. For more information, visit www.friendsofcpcanimals.org.